Today in the news, we got some Threadripper, some Nintendo, and a little bit of Corsair. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. The Ryzen 3000 CPU design leads us to believe that a higher core count is expected. Looking at the actual chip, we can tell that a 16 core variant might be in the works. Now, as we all know, really high core count on the AMD side has always been a staple of the Threadripper and Epic line of CPUs, so to potentially see a 16 core on their mainstream might cannibalize their other products. Well, during an investor meeting the other day, AMD unveiled their roadmap for 2019, and it looks like we're getting Threadripper 3 before the end of the year. Threadripper has always had a yearly release in August since it was launched back in 2017, and between the first and second gen, we literally got twice the cores. So what will AMD do this time with their HEDT platform? If Ryzen 3000 comes out with a 16 core processor, the lower end Threadripper 2920X and 2950X won't have a place in the market anymore. And if we look at the second generation of Epic, they go all the way up to 64 cores, so it's safe to assume that Threadripper 3 would have to find a place in the middle. Personally, I think we'll see a 48 core CPU as the new flagship for Threadripper, but also a very high focus on faster clock speeds. This would follow the trend with Zen 2 and would definitely fill a gap between Ryzen and Epic without eating away at these markets. Also on that roadmap, we can see a mid-year release for the Ryzen 3000 CPU, although we all kind of expected that. What do you guys think? Can Threadripper find a middle ground between the 16 cores of Ryzen and 32 to 64 cores of Epic? Or do you think that AMD won't go higher than let's say 12 cores for Ryzen, allowing Threadripper to stay within the same core count, but just focus on IPC and clock speeds? Let me know your thoughts down below. Next up, we've got Nintendo. On Wednesday, they announced their new introduction to Labo, the Labo VR kit. There are two kits available. The first one is an $80 kit with all of the accessories. You get the VR goggles, which look pretty uncomfortable with the cardboard edges, a blaster, which is a head-mounted pump-action gun, a camera that looks pretty interesting, honestly, a swan or a duck, I'm not sure exactly what that is, and an elephant kit, yeah. The second kit is $40 and it just comes with the goggles and the blaster. You can buy the two extra kits for 20 bucks a pop if you want to. The wind pedal one is weird as hell if you ask me. I mean, I like the idea of Labo. It's interesting and the Labo Garage can definitely bring about some great games, but VR in my opinion just won't work on the Switch. Or at least it's going to end up like 1-2 Switch where people are going to play once or twice and just store the game away, except this time they have a bunch of cardboard stuff to deal with. I mean, the 720p screen is just not high res enough for an enjoyable experience and having to hold the console in front of your head at all times is going to be super annoying. What do you guys think? Would you pay 40 to 80 bucks for a game you're only going to play a handful of times? Let me know down below. And lastly, we have Corsair with a brand new addition to their product lineup. This time with a living room slash entertainment center focused keyboard. The K83 is a bit of a weird keyboard, honestly. It's being marketed as a do everything product. It can game, it can navigate through your menus, your pictures, and oh, it has a joystick. Now, when I first saw the video, the joystick made absolutely no sense to me. I mean, they show the joystick, but if you have to click or right click, your hand would be in the absolute worst position to do so. Well, a little tour of the product page, and it looks like they've thought of that. You can click by using the trigger above the joystick as a L button, and you can right click with the button on the underside of the keyboard. Kind of like using the right side of the keyboard as the right part of a controller and the left as a keyboard. There is no mechanical switches though, and it looks like Corsair gave up on RGB for this one, but it's wireless and honestly a pretty elegant living room solution. What do you guys think? Would you use a keyboard with like half controller, half uh, keyboard? Let me know down below. All right, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. As always, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. Stay frosty, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Don't hesitate to leave a like down below.